Hello. Uh, good afternoon to all. And uh, I welcome to this presentation. And I thank ITA for uh, providing this opportunity uh, to take this uh, presentation uh, in this workshop. So I will uh, get into the presentation directly. So uh, this presentation is about the energy efficient recovery boiler. So how we can bring the uh, boiler into the energy efficient uh, way. Uh, it can be uh, a new boiler or it can be a possible even in existing boilers which are in operation. So uh, those features we are now uh, trying to cover up in this section. So the content of this presentation is the recovery boiler process uh, and over, overview just uh, one slide. And energy optimization, uh, what kind of high power features we can add and uh, high power configurations, how we can build it into this system and uh, limiting factors for high power generation. So there are some factors which is limiting and how to uh, rectify that. And we have case study one, case study two. Uh, the case study one is from uh, a boiler in Europe and the case study uh, in somewhere in Scandinavian location and the case study two, it is in Asia Pacific in India. And, uh, uh, and finally, it's somewhere. So recovery boiler process, uh, okay, most of the people's related uh, recovery boiler will, will learn about this process. So it is just we are uh, recovering the uh, chemical uh, from the bo uh, from the black liquor. So uh, all all the sulfur contents in black liquors, which we are uh, taking to the recovery recovery process, has been converted into sodium sulfide, and balanced components has been taken as sodium carbonate. So that's how the chemical recovery uh, which is been happening there. And, the other uh, lignin component in the black liquor which we are converting into heat uh, so that uh, we are replacing for uh, generate, uh, getting the uh, high steam, gener uh, steam generation in the recovery boiler. So this is a, a process as an over overall view and the heat, this uh, looks how the boilers, uh, the conventional boilers it would be. Uh, so uh, just we have this combustion as air system where uh, we, we, it has been uh, uh, given in the uh, furnace and also we have taken black liquor uh, into the furnace for combustion and the superators have been located here and uh, there is a boiling bank and economic zones. So after that we have the ESP and ID pack. So, so this process is uh, it's a conventional boiler how it looks. And uh, this kind of energy optimization, high power features, how we can able to build in into the recovery boilers. So what are the uh, areas we have to concentrate. So here, uh, the idea of bringing uh, more energy efficient recovery boilers are to reduce the uh, fossil fuel because uh, in order to uh, utilize the mill demand, actually uh, the power demand, we are uh, having most of the mills have the power boilers which is uh, take, uh, taking power from coal or uh, oil or from the grid power. So here, uh, the idea is we are maximizing the electricity output from the recovery boiler. So how uh, so with that, uh, the, re the renewable energy source has been uh, put in into the place by which the fossil fuel can be get reduced. That helps uh, to reduce the carbon footprint of the mill. So that's how uh, the green energy of the uh, mill will increase and that uh, the CO emission or uh, the carbon footprint of the mill will get reduced. So that is a uh, thought of uh, making the recovery boiler producing more electricity than what it is doing now with the same uh, heating, uh, same black liquor with the same heating. So uh, what are the high power features to uh, bring this boiler as energy efficient boiler which uh, we can able to add it in the recovery boiler store? Uh, the high uh, dry solid fibers. So uh, this is one of the future and high combustion at temperature. So we are trying to take a more extraction schemes and try to increase the air, uh, combustion air temperature and also uh, we are replaced here recovering the heat from the uh, flue gas that is heat recovery after precipitator the flue gas heat can be recovered and the vent gas which is now taken to the uh, roof of the boiler In most of the boilers the, the heat is not being utilized so that is a possibility of replacing this heat from the uh, vent gas tube conductor we can able to recover that heat and another area is uh, feed water temperature. So we are trying to optimize the feed water temperature uh, such a way that uh, to produce uh, more uh, uh, steam generation to the turbine and also the high steam parameters. So higher the temperature definitely will have uh, addition to the power generation. So here we are uh, thinking about uh, talking on high uh, power generation and also high steam generation. And uh, the low pressure suit blowing, uh, so that is uh, still we are not that uh, implemented anywhere, but it is in the conceptual stage. And uh, these are the high power features, how it has been configured into the system. Uh, so uh, 
when we talk with high dry solids, so here uh, we are uh, with the modern evaporators what we are using nowadays we are able to get 80% uh, even in Europe they are trying to achieve 84% dry solid concentration. So that is directly adding uh, heating to the uh, recovery boiler and increases the steam generation. And the combustion air uh, heating, uh, so the combustion air heating we are using this extraction steam from the turbine and we can have three stages and the first stage is replacing this flue gas heat, the flue gas whatever the heat it has been there. We are taking this heat of the flue gas and try to uh, put it into the combustion air system and heating that uh, combustion air. That's the first stage and second stage and stage third, third, third stage we are heating via MP and MP2 extraction steams. So uh, whatever the steam source availability in uh, turbine extraction. And uh, the feed water uh, temperature, how we can be able to optimize is, uh, we can able to uh, take the full pressure feed water tank, that means we are not uh, taking the complete pressure of empty steam, which is being extracted from the uh, turbine, that means we are not throttling any uh, pressure uh, here. So that, that way we are uh, adding this feed water tank to the full pressure, taking the feed water to the higher temperature, and also the feed water preheater and heat interheater will try to increase the temperature to the optimized level of the it uh, depends on the drum pressure. So, so it may, uh, again we can add this uh, heaters, depends on the uh, boiler uh, capacity and, limit and, and also the other future uh, limitations. And uh, the heat recovery, we already talked about the flue gas cooler and the venting gas heat panel. So that also we can take this venting gas uh, heat from the uh, recovery boiler can be utilized uh, to the demi water, thus reduce the LP steam consumption of the feed water tank, which increases the power, power generation of the turbine. So, uh, this high power features for uh, higher electricity production. So, here I have put the uh, base case as a benchmark as 85 bar, 480 degree is the present case, uh, but uh, many of the mills are operating with even lower uh, pressure, 65 bar and 465 uh, case. But here, if, when I took with this case, uh, what will be the uh, uh, power uh, steam generation per kg of black liquor? That means uh, kg per kg of dry solids what we are getting. This I have put it in this uh, green color uh, box. So uh, by adding each features, uh, what we are now uh, discussing, uh, what is a stepwise increase in this uh, steam generation we can able to see. But here we can see the steam generation is in a stable way because this is not adding any steam uh, generation increase, but this is increasing the plant efficiency, including the turbine. Because we are reducing the uh, steam consumption from the turbine, thus increase the electricity production of the... So here, this red color line showing the electricity uh, production, or uh, uh, the increase in uh, power generation compared to the base case. So, where we can able to see uh, this blue gas cooler addition, two condenser additions can increase the uh, power generation. And thus, with high steam parameters also, we are getting more power uh, we can bring in. So uh, the range is, uh, as I already mentioned, the black liquor concentration can be taken up to maximum by 84%. And the sulfur uh, reduction efficiency, because when the furnace is so hot, we can get a good reduction efficiency. And mostly in high, recovery, uh, high power recovery boilers, we are getting almost 96% uh, uh, efficiency, which we guarantee are achieved also in many cases. And uh, mainstream parameters, uh, we are targeting somewhere 110, 515. But again, this is depends on the uh, boiler uh, capacity versus investment and uh, many cases we went with uh, 98 bar, uh, 500 degree and uh, even uh, many uh, new Chinese cases they are handling with 98, uh, 98 bar and uh, 500 degree also. So this is the maximum I have shown here. And the combustion air also can be taken up to 210 degree with the extraction of uh, steam from the turbine that helps to increase the combustion air temperature to 210. And the flue gas outlet, uh, we can able to, the, flu, the flue gas temperature can be optimized and we can bring down to 180 degree. Uh, so that we are recovering that heat uh, basically in boilers, conventional boilers, we are getting flue gas of 160 to 180 degree. Uh, Wherein when we adding this kind of feed water uh, uh, temperature optimization features, it will increase the uh, flue gas temperature. So the temperature of the flue gas can go 190 or 200. So that we are utilizing into heating the combustion air as well as uh, demi water. So that uh, re re reduces the uh, combustion air heating helps to increase the steam generation, and uh, uh, demi water heating uh, helps to reduce the LP steam consumption that increases the uh, uh, turbine efficiency. And the heat recovery from the dissolving tank venti gas that uh, we can take it to the demi water, and the feed water preheat optimization. The where we can have three features as we discussed LP, uh, full uh, LP pressure feed water tank, 
period preheated before economic cell and inter uh, and interheated between economic cells. We are uh, placing them. So this is a key parameters uh, where I have compared uh, when compared with uh, conventional boilers, which are producing the steam generation of something like 3.6 to uh, 3.7 uh, kg per kg of dry solid. So this is with uh, soft wood because of the soft wood, the calorific value is on slightly higher side. When we go with hardwood, we are getting somewhere around 3.4 or something. So uh, this range with these high power features, we can able to increase this uh, steam economy somewhere in the range more than four or uh, 3.8 uh, when it is of somewhere operating for 3.4 or so. We can bring it to 3.8 kg per kg of dry solid. And uh, like our configuration, now we, we will see that each feature, how we can able to put it to the recovery boiler. So uh, I will just cover up this, whatever we uh, see in these features, I will go one by one. So uh, high uh, black liquor dry solid content. So when the black liquor dry solid contents have been increased, uh, say some, somewhere around 80% or 84%, that means the moisture in the black liquor will be removed. So the heat, the heat reflecting for uh, he, heating that uh, moisture uh, can be used to uh, generate more steam and also the flue gas which is taking away the heat also can be reduced. So that, that way uh, it will increase, helps increase in the steam generation in the recovery boiler. And uh, when we talk about the hard preheating, so as, we, uh, as I mentioned, this, uh, this, this is possible to take uh, this kind of extractions and uh, LP, MP and MP2 extractions to heat the uh, combustion air. And also, uh, this first stage can be uh, replaced with the flue gas uh, heat recovery. Uh, so most of the mills, uh, they are opting for that option also. So the air breathing has proven to be very profitable in most of the mills when we test when we check it. And this is uh, each blocks uh, we are giving uh, this kind of uh, air preheaters uh, where we have set the maintenance features also. So the temperatures we are heating more than 200 degree and where we are adding DNCG and venti gas, uh, we are uh, trying to uh, keep the maximum average temperature as uh, 200 degree because the venti gas temperature uh, we are heating some cases to 120 and some cases we are taking the plain venti gas into the uh, insulin, okay? mixing with uh, secondary air and insulinating into the uh, furnace. So we are not leaving any venti gas uh, out from the regulatory boiler. And this is uh, a more profitable as uh, LNG gas. And the feed water preheating, uh, so uh, we are uh, in the feed water preheating, we have three stages as I said earlier. So we can able to uh, operate the feed water tank at full pressure by removing this uh, throttling valve. So actually this is, uh, it is not animated slide. So this uh, throttling valve, we basically remove it and put the deaerator into the full uh, pressure operation where the feed water tank uh, the temperature can be high. And also these feed water interheaters have been put in place so that the optimized uh, temperature uh, where we can able to fix uh, compared to the uh, drum saturation temperature. Uh, so uh, that again depends on the boiler operating pressure. So what pressure the boiler is operating and how uh, how much heat it can be used to heat the feed water as to be uh, der derived for each, uh, every case. So uh, when we do this, there is a, uh, the overall, when we see the boiler efficiency, there is a little drop because of the uh, uh, flue gas temperature increase because the feed water we are heating up more. But uh, when we, without flue gas cooler, when we put this option, it may not be a viable solution. So this combined with the flue gas cooler will give the uh, entire uh, electricity generation increase in the mill so that the efficiency of the entire plant will get improved. And uh, back, the back pressure feed water tank, so this point uh, we already discussed and removing this throttling wall. So I just uh, move it. And the feed water preheater, how we are uh, adding uh, in between the stages. So after the feed water pump, we are adding this feed water preheater, heating the feed water somewhere to 165 degree, and we are putting the uh, interheater and taking MP2 steam to heat uh, further, uh, or depends on the boiler operating pressure. So this is one of the installation where uh, this preheater has been installed and put it in operation. So uh, the preheater is using MP steam and interheater is using uh, MP2 steam. And both combination can be used, it depends on the uh, boiler specification, how it can be uh, taken out. So as I mentioned, without flue gas cooler, uh, when we put this, we cannot able to replace the complete uh, energy efficiency. So this has to be bring in along with the flue gas cooler. That's the concept. Okay. So the heat from the venti gas tube condenser. So, uh, 
Typically, from the dissolving tank, the venting gas which, which is taken to the roof as being diverted to the venting gas scrubber, where we are cleaning the uh, venting gas, all, all the particles carry over will be get removed, and then it has been put into the tube condenser. So, where the tube, in tube condenser, we have two stages. So, the first stage we are replaced, we are using for heating the demi water. So, the second stage is only the backup. So, in case if there is, uh, if you are not operating the demi water, this can be a backup to control the venting gas taking to the furnace because as per the BLR BAC code uh, we need to maintain uh, 43 degree of the venting gas temperature to, uh, to ensure that all the sufficient moisture has been removed from the venting gas before taking to the liquid boiler. So because for that reason we keep the uh, cooling water as a backup to ensure the temperature has been uh, achieved uh, there. And with that it's, uh, the possible temperature increase can be 80 degree. So this is an image uh, how the tube contents uh, the so when venting gas scrubber and tube condenser has been put in uh, in one of the uh, boilers. So I will go on. And flue gas coolers, uh, so the flue gas coolers, uh, it will be uh, installed after the uh, uh, electrostatic facilitator at the outlet. So where uh, we are taking this uh, circulation water, heating that water via flue gas and taking that water to heating the demi water and also the combustion air. So here the uh, system looks to be like this. So here uh, you can see this uh, this flue gas heat has been recovered and taken back to the uh, combustion air system and also to the demi water uh, heat exchange. And here is one of the installation how the flue gas cooler has been installed. With uh, this, this is, these are the special suit blowers for the coolers. So it is a, a rack type uh, suit uh, blowers. And here this uh, rack suit blower construction is how inside it looks. On the low pressure food boiler, this is a concept level and uh, we have we been checking with uh, our, our suppliers of food boilers also to bring in this concept to the boilers. Uh, the idea is basically we are trying to uh, uh, see the peak, uh, uh, peak impact pressure of the food boiler which is the important factor where it will uh, remove the uh, chutes or hash from the recovery boiler. So this uh, peak, uh, what we call it as peak uh, impact pressure, so without affecting much how the low pressure uh, suit boilers can be put in place. So this uh, also under uh, evaluation here. Yeah. And the high steam parameters. So the, when, when I talk about this high steam parameters, we are, I am talking somewhere more than 90 bar pressure and even we can go up to 110 bar pressure, so which we have references. And also the temperature, we are uh, staying somewhere from 480 above, that means 490, 500 or 515. Any, anywhere depends on the turbine supplier need, it can be uh, kept in. So this definitely increases the electricity uh, output from the generator and but there are certain limitation factors like when we go for high temperature we are always uh, very cautious about the superheater corrosion uh, risk because of the high temperature the corrosivity of the uh, uh, will induce more uh, because of high chlorine content in the uh, black liquor in, in the uh, ash. So we, we have to be uh, very careful when we uh, take it to the uh, high uh, pressure and temperature. So the levels of the chlorine and potassium in uh, black liquor is very important. And uh, I, I will uh, take some more slide where uh, I have attacked how the K and CL has to be controlled. So I will just move on here. So in these all features, there are some limitations uh, for uh, depends on the uh, installations of uh, uh, in the boilers, the existing boilers. Uh, uh, capacity is one of the limitation. Ah, yes. Uh, capacity is a limitation and uh, the feed water, uh, the preheating of feed water and combustion air is uh, extracted by uh, the extraction steam pressure or drum pressure, so that's uh, another limitation. <laughs> and uh, the dry soil contents, how much we can go up, it, again it depends on uh, the liquor characteristics and the raw material uh, which we are handling. So uh, that again depends how much uh, the viscosity of the liquor can be uh, pumpable, so that also uh, have some limitations. <laughs> and uh, finally the ash quality, I will just uh, go a little faster in this uh, last few slides. So where uh, this K and CL when we talk about, uh, so uh, it is very important to ensure what is the mill uh, intake of K and CL. The all intakes mostly come from the wood, raw materials and also some from the water or something from other uh, external sources, there is a possibility of K and CL addition to the mill. So that uh, K and CL additions, the entire uh, mill will have the only purchase point is the ESP outlet ash where we can able to take, wherever we are adding the K and CL, uh, we can able to 
treat this ESP hash and we try to remove this JNCF content uh, from that uh, uh, location. So for that, there are certain uh, systems have been available uh, nowadays, uh, like uh, hash treatment systems. So uh, here, uh, it is very important to understand the uh, hash behavior, how the hash uh, behaves, uh, how it induces uh, corrosion or plugging of the boiler because of this KNCF. So uh, this is a temperature profile uh, like uh, T0, T15, T70, and T100, which is uh, very much to get uh, uh, understand of these temperature profiles uh, to eliminate this kind of uh, superheater uh, corrosion or this kind of plugging in the boiler tank or uh, in some cases even economics also. Uh, so this uh, I am not taking uh, more because it's uh, more on theory will come. Then I will just go to next slide. So uh, mostly the cleanability, uh, which uh, this chlorine content in the uh, ESP ash or in the black liquor affects the. Uh, cleanability period of the recovery boiler. So when we have high chlorine, the cleanability of the recovery boiler will get reduced. So how the sticky area of the temperature when the chlorine is increasing, it looks like. So this will cause a uh, faster plugging of boiler bank uh, panel tubes. Uh, that we are trying to eliminate, uh, and we are trying to put this uh, uh, fouling more mostly in the superheater, which is widely spaced in all the recovery boilers. So that's where the cleanability can be achieved in 12 months, even 18 months, it's possible. And uh, and next one is the potassium content uh, in uh, ash. Of course, the chlorine and potassium completely have the property of T1570, but uh, this potassium content have a significant uh, reduction of this uh, T0 temperature where it will affect the uh, uh, superheater uh, corrosivity, uh, corrosivity. That's the, the superheater tube, uh, it will corrode much faster. So when we go for the high temperature, we have to ensure this chlorine and potassium has to be put it in limit. Uh, this is applicable for high temperature uh, when we operate. And uh, so uh, this is the uh, reason where the fouling can be happened uh, in most of the boilers in uh, near boiler bank and it will cause the cleanability issue. So we are trying to uh, shifting into this superheater zone where this KNCL has to be limited. And how this uh, plug, uh, the stickiness has been uh, shown in this uh, image. Actually. It will happen into the system. And uh, here, uh, I am just explaining about this corrosivity, how the tube's corrosivity will be uh, leading. So this again depends on the T0 temperature of the ash. So T0 is the first melting uh, point of the ash. So when this temperature, when it is very close to the tube wall uh, metal temperature, then it will induce the corrosion of the tubes very much faster. So it, when we check all these uh, superheaters against the high steam temperature, we will always ensure that the T0 will be false somewhere here. Otherwise, we will not recommend customer to go for very high temperature of 500 or 510. We will try to limit somewhere around 490 or 495. So these two features are important. Uh, so this we have to be taken very uh, strictly. And the right selection of superheater materials is also very important when we uh, go for this high, power, uh, high temperature uh, uh, steam parameters. So in uh, most of the cases, government is also uh, giving this kind of uh, Bender superheater tubes with uh, 309L uh, weld over limit areas. So, uh, as we explain this ash treatment system, uh, where uh, we have this remove, uh, we can remove this KNCL and also recover key chemical. Of course, there will be some sodium losses which has to be recovered, and uh, the investment versus the losses has to be seen. Uh, so in the first case study, I will just show this uh, mill in Scandinavia where the mill capacity is. I just a lot of two more. Uh, so in the case study one, uh, I have shown the recovery boiler of 7,200 TDS in operation, and uh, so here uh, these are the all, these boilers will have all these high power features, and the boiler is operating at 110 bar, 515, uh, including some ash treatment system in this boiler. So here uh, the mill is uh, uh, increases the power generation of from 205 megawatt with the conventional design they taken to 240 uh, 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 around 240 megawatt with this high power feature increase. So uh, this will have a, a report that uh, they reduced the uh, fossil fuel to zero percent and uh, sustained uh, the complete um, mill demand with the recovery boiler. So the recovery boiler is uh, now uh, taking the complete uh, 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 pulping demand and uh, the running. They are changing the uh, mill to the renewable energy uh, mill and reducing the carbon footprint and uh, got uh, many discounts from the uh, Scandinavian governments. And this is the 
case two uh, of second boiler, which is 2700 TDS circuit boiler, where we have also adopted this 110 boiler by 15 degree, where uh, we given the provision to handle even 80% concentration liquor, uh, which are not uh, percent is operating with 76% somewhere. And this is the uh, high power feature. So in the conventional design, they took something like uh, 65 bar, 465 uh, is the temperature. Now they are going to uh, 110 bar and 550. And I think there were some challenges in uh, controlling this K and CL, but uh, yeah, we are working on that and uh, try to uh, uh, fix that uh, levels, uh, but it is well below uh, the area limits what they will have. So in the overall summary, I just put all these high power features into the system and we are trying to get a surplus uh, energy from the recovery boiler and that is initiation towards energy and resource efficiency improvement in recovery boiler. Thanks. Thank you.